Hey everybody, I'm Michelle LeBlanc. I'm founder of OutRival Racing and I've been a coach with OutRival Racing and QT2 Systems. QT2 and OutRival are one business but two teams. Um, and OutRival Racing has been the official coach of Emerald Herman Ironman Texas, Ironman 70.3 Texas, and Ironman Texas the last three years. I've raced this course um, several times. I grew up in the Houston, Galveston area, so I've come down to this area a lot in, o over the course of my life. Um, so this this short video, it's about 10 minutes. It's going to give some tips and pointers. Actually, we're going to start a little bit with the swim, but um, and here let me pause it real quick. Um, we're going to start with the swim, but then we're going to I'm going to give you some video footage of the run course and this is the run course for 2016 since the course has changed in 2016 from 2015 um, I'm going to show you just some of the those changes um, and then also try and give you some tips and pointers as we go um, just so that you're not just looking just at the footage so let me just start out with the swim course because where you exit in trans and then go into transition is also around the same place that you exit for the run. So where you enter into transition from the swim is around the same place that you exit for the run. So I figured this would kind of be good just to show you um, that area. So here's the run, the, I'm sorry, the swim course. It's a one loop course in the bay. Um, the only thing that makes this swim challenging, honestly, is that it can be, if it's windy, it's going to be very um you know, wavy and choppy. We've had a couple years where it's been very, very choppy, and then other years it's been uh, relatively calm. It's nice and clear for the most part. It's not like Galveston where the beach is on the other side. This is in the bay, um, and it's more brackish water, so it's not nearly as salty as even um, the actual um, Gulf of Mexico is. So you can see here, you've got a, a one-loop course, very easy to sight. The easiest thing to sight in coming off the swim is this big paddle wheel boat, and I'm going to show you a video of that here in just a second. So let's get started. I jump around a little bit on the videos. I'm not sure that I, I have them all in order. I, I went out here and took videos all over the place, and it, it was really hard to kind of piece it together. All right, so here is the swim exit. As you can see, off, off to the right, is the paddle boat. You'll be coming in from out here as you swim in. Uh, the race directors or race man management is going to drop a, a nice long ramp um, and you'll have assistance getting out of this water. So the ramp is not here right now, but it will be there somewhere around in this area. I, I'm not quite sure, but you can sight pretty much off this boat and then you're going to exit out of the water somewhere up in here. You won't be stepping on all that mud. Um, again, there will be a um, a nice ramp and a carpeted ramp. Here's what you're looking at. You actually, they carpet this area right here. The left will be the wetsuit strippers where you can just take the top half of your wetsuit down at your waist, then sit on your bum, put your feet up in the air, and um, and let the wetsuit strippers yank that wetsuit off. And then you're going to continue to run basically where those cars are is, is pretty much where your run in into transition is. All right, so that's just a swim exit. The reason I showed that to you is because that's the same place that you basically run out as well. So that takes us right here where the run start is. That was basically what you were just looking at, and I think I have some more video here in just a minute. Um, but basically what we're looking at is a three-loop course, um, very convoluted, as you can see. You've got out and backs, and then you've even got out and backs on an out and back. So this right here is an out and back that then comes back and then goes this direction um, and around. So, of course, it's done different things over the years. Um, <clears throat> it's come over here onto the to the airport um, into the airport area. It's also um, come over in this section over here. It's done a lot of different things. It's also let me think. What's the major change here? Oh, the major change from most years is that on loops two and three, you don't actually cross over right here and then run the trolley path again. So the club tents are all over here. And the only time, the, as I'm assuming that's still going to be the case in 2016. I haven't asked the volunteer coordinator that yet. Could be different. But if they aren't, assuming that's where they are, then you're just going to run by those tents once, and then you're going to get on the course, and then run the course. And then when you get back around for loop number two, where there has always been the finish line, rather than, than veering off back over to the trolley path, you're actually going to proceed kind of past the finish line, if you will, back down, um, towards the, the center part and then out Lockheed for an out and back and then um, around um, basically Moody Gardens. 
All right, I basically took footage of kind of a little bit of this trolley path section. I got a little bit in here. I, I get some footage of the Lockheed Drive out and back. Um, I didn't take you around this direction only because um, this area is barricaded when I went down there. Um, I take uh, some footage here out on Hope Boulevard. I take some footage out here on Jones Road. This is actually a road, and this is a new section. Um, and then I take you around City Park Loop. Right now it is um, off-road, but the race director has um, informed me that it's most likely going to be paved. Um, and then I also take some footage right here where you then turn around and then come back. Um, I don't get any of the footage over here by the shore, which is really cool. I don't have any footage up here by the Oleander Bowl. Um, for the most part, this is a completely flat course. There is a little hill right here that bites you. Um, I believe it's right there. Let me think. It's around here somewhere. Actually, no, it looks like they might have taken that out. So I'm not quite sure on this section right here. I don't have footage here, but I have footage of all the rest of um, the run course. All right, so here's transition area. Um, obviously, there's cars here, but it's a nice big transition area. Um, this is uh, basically where the course used to take you when you'd go to the loops two and three, but this is if you're walking basically from the run course over the transition area. Again, you will not run this section at all um, this time at Galveston. The run course itself starts right here when you're heading down the trolley path. So. Um, I included that section just to show you that that's been taken out, it looks like, from the map, and the run starts right here. Um, it's most likely that the, the club tents will be off to the right, and then you're going to run down this section, um, and then you turn around and come back down the other side. So what you just saw right there was basically looking down this trolley path, Then you're going to make a left turn and then come back down, and then um, run down this road. So the next footage I'm going to show you is Lockheed Road, um, and this is just an out and back. You're going to run straight down this road and then make a U-turn right before you get to Hope Boulevard and then come back. Some tips I want to give you for the run course in general are first and foremost, and now we're going back down the other direction, first and foremost on the run you want to make sure that you always focus on the three things that you can control. Actually this is true for the whole race. You want to focus on your pacing plan, your own individual pacing plan, you want to focus on your hydration and nutrition, and then you want to focus on your mental game at all times. This is the, the middle section um, of the course where you basically run through here, and then you're going to turn right down here and run behind Moody Gardens. So here I kind of show you. Um, it looks like they've added a nice little um, fun thing for the kids to do as well. So you're going to run down this road. I didn't go too far down this road. I wasn't able to go on a car, and I didn't have my bike, so I'm just walking on foot for this. But you're going to run down this section. You're going to run around Moody Gardens, which would be right here. And then you're going to get on, over onto Hope Boulevard. All right, here's the new section where you're turning onto Jones Road. This is a new section that we haven't run before. Um, I'm assuming they're going to close off one lane, but basically you're running out on this road somewhere. Um, and then we're going to go over the canal, so it looks like there's a little bit of a hill here. And then at some point, at least um, indicative of the map, um, we're going to turn around and then come back the other direction. Now we're on Skymaster, and we're going to veer off to the right. We're going we're to turn right onto City Park Loop. Now right now this is, this is what the road looks like. It's a little square, um, and uh, the, the race director has informed me that this will be paved by the time the race starts. Um, so we've turned off of Skymaster, we've gone around City Park Loop, and then we're going to turn right back onto Skymaster. So we just took a quick right there. And now we run down this road to some point where we turn back, we do a U-turn, and come back down Skymaster. Um, I'm not quite sure where that is. I'm assuming it's somewhere around here where we're going to U-turn and then go back the other direction. All right, so again, the three tips are to focus on the things you can control, which are pacing, um, your race fueling and hydration, and then your mental game. This is towards the end of the loop. There's the boat to the side, and this is where you'll come in um, either to repeat loops number two or two or three, um, or go into the finish. Um, from a pacing perspective, you want to remember that the best well-executed runs in a half Ironman are those that have a nice steady heart rate average across the course of the run. Um, pace typically in triathlon um, especially long course, we see it drop off from kind of the start to the finish with that nice average heart rate. That's usually the opposite of 
what we see in, in open runs, but that's all right. So try and find a heart rate that you can hold. Typically that heart rate average should be higher than your bike average um, with a typical offset that's pretty similar um, to what your, your offset is in, in terms of training zones. I'll do this one more time. From a hydration standpoint, you want to make sure that you know how much fluids you need, how much high, uh, sodium, potassium, magnesium, at least potassium and magnesium the week before need to be solid, um, and then also um, how much carbohydrate you need. The last thing that we recommend is that you just focus on your mental game. Stay strong. Have positive self-talk. Know that this is going to hurt. Um, expect that you're going to suffer, um, and just keep your mental game strong. Um, hopefully this just um, let you see what the course looks like, especially for those of you that um, have never been down here. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email, email us at Outrival Racing. Our website is www.outrivalracing.com. And let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.